Good morning and uh, welcome at this lecture, the motivation to study for the Erasmus Plus project, the worldwide school psychological support in the post COVID era. My name is Igor Vitale. I am a psychologist and I will introduce you this lecture for our digital course. Motivation to study is one of the key characteristics for school education. It's what moves and pushes students to study, to spend time in the activities of study. Today, differently from the past, there are many stimuli that can distract the student from the school activities, from the study. We are overwhelmed with the hyperstimulation. So some people believe that hyperstimulation received by students is something that really creates a damage to the attentional process of students, because if you focus the attention on many things, it would be very difficult to memorize everything. In order to reduce this problem, which is a problem, the teacher has have, um, some important responsibilities. The teacher is in fact between in a, in a kind of war between the ability, their ability to explain things and catch attention or something, and the attention of students moving in very different directions. Uh, but not always a decline in the study motivation or a bad performance of a student are something that you can attribute to the quality of the lecture. This is just one of the factors. Of course, if the lecture is not motivating, is not well explained, is not uh, well done, you will have a decline of the performance. But the decline of the performance in the students can be based on psychological factors. We have to understand if this is the case. Plus, there are learning disorders uh, which have to be uh, assessed, evaluated with uh, a real great attention, like an extreme caution, because there are also some emotional factors that uh, the teacher can understand are present, they can intercept, and of course, after they have to create a synergy with the school psychologist in order to improve the school performance. Uh, it's a synergy, probably the key to improve the results. So the psychologist and the teacher can be even more effective if, if they have synergies and they are both focused on increasing the motivation to study. And this synergy brings important benefits. Uh, we've seen in the first project results of this project that there is a kind of gap between the expectation of teachers about psychological services in schools and what actually psychologists can do. But the key is the synergy, is to determine how these two important pillars of the education can interact. But we've also seen that uh, there is not a total coverage of psychological professions in the schools in Europe. There are uh, some differences between the European countries and how they work. So it's very important to give a European framework in this sense. Motivated students strengthen his self-esteem and then improves the quality of life. Understanding why a student have to study uh, makes them give sense to the effort they have for memorizing and learning new things. You can also move the attention of the students and avoid to use a method of based only on reinforcement. I give you a vote, a positive one or a punishment based on the grades you give to the student, but you have to move your attention and educate them in the value of the grade of that number or basically on the learning, which is the more important thing, why they have to study and what they can do in the future with the abilities that the students learn at school. You can also uh, have reinforce your capacity to distinguish situation in which a drop uh, in the motivation, the, the reduction of motivation is based on the emotional factors. For example, how much a student is identified with the grade is uh, basically focused on the number and not on the learning. You can also help teachers to um, be detached from the ideas that they initially form about a student. We all know that somehow everybody of us uh, uh, base some evaluation also on some impression and some initial evaluation. A teacher has to be detached from this, have to be more uh, near to understanding how 
teachers can help students in being more motivated. If a teacher is uh, believes that the student is not good, this will be not beneficial for the student and will uh, actually fail in the mission of educating people. Even if actually that student uh, has having a very lack uh, of mo very big lack of motivation or, or results. And of course, a lack of concentration have also some physiological causes like a lack of sleep, lack of physical or say physiological needs. So students may lose their motivation for, for very different reasons. The student is not a number, but uh, first of all, is a person who has a home, a life beyond schools, a future with problems that uh, maybe the teachers cannot understand fully. So it's very important that the teachers have a um, the, the openness to understand all possible factors leading to a specific lack of motivation. And also you have to be very good in set realistic goals with that student in terms of quantity and, and quality of things to study. Uh, it's quite important and it's a, a, a global responsibility to reduce early school leaving. And so in these factors, teachers play a role in motivating students and uh, psychologists can be helpful in the critical situation especially. Uh, because minimizing the early school leaving is a United Nations goal for 2030, is inside the Sustainable Development Goals. And of course Europe's uh, it's inside this idea and wants that the percentage of people who drop out from schools early have to be lower than 9%. If we look, for example, to the countries involved in this project, Worldwide School Psychological Support in the post-COVID era, several countries of our partnership are still fi quite far from the target, like Italy, Romania, Cyprus, and Malta. So there are a few things we have to debunk few myths I told in these educational materials. For example, we have not to give up to the concept of reduced attention span because there is this, uh, uh, this tendency to believe that uh, in the future with the massive use of technology, with the massive stimulation, students have a lack of attention. The problem is multitasking, but uh, the actual capacity to uh, make attention to things uh, is, is still good because uh, there are many tests that are showing that if you measure the, the capacity to keep the attention, the capacity to keep the attention is, uh, is quite long, maybe can be on wrong stimuli, but uh, the capacity of bringing attention is true. And also there is a, a very dangerous myth, a false information about the different performance of boys and girls in mathematics. Uh, what's the problem? The problem is also that if the teacher have some beliefs regarding the capacity of mathematics of a whatever subgroup, in this case we talk about gender differences, but uh, can be whatever, of course this will affect also the real performance, it's the impression of teachers and the beliefs of teachers somehow affect performance. Uh, there is also an interesting study about psychological characteristics uh, of the interaction teacher-student about the concept of mathematical anxiety, which is transmitted. Some studies show that performance in mathematics is significantly influenced by the teacher's beliefs based on the idea that the teacher's beliefs have on the student's skills. So if the, if the teachers have mathematical anxiety, this will be more present in the classroom. If teachers have beliefs about mathematics capacity of, of uh, subgroups of students, maybe uh, girls, maybe other sectors, maybe whatever uh, field, uh, this will affect the real results. We are moving away from the United Nations goals. Uh, among the objective of the United Nations, there is a performance in mathematics, science and reading. There is also recent uh, Eurostat report in May 2022, showing not only that we are not achieving these United Nations goals because it's absolutely important that future students have a high performance in mathematics, science and reading, which are basic competencies, very important in all fields. But we are also getting away, moving away, reducing the capacity of students in mathematics, science and reading. There is a hard part of this work, which is education, but 
uh, there are also psychological factors in education like motivation to study. Can the psychologist have a motivational role, which is a question? In my opinion, yes, of course. Motivations and emotions go hand by hand. Motivation derives from the Latin movere, uh, which is also the same term uh, that uh, have the same origin of the word emotion. So many theorists and psychologists uh, say that motivation and emotion have the same uh, linguistic origin, which is moving people. Also, emotions move, moves behavior moves uh, away from something or towards something. Motivation and emotion go hand by hand, but how much are the lessons really able to be motivating today? What really excites students? Uh, how easy the evaluation process is to strengthen students' desire to improve themselves? This is a big question. It's not easy to, to, to be engaging. There are for directives to promote motivation. For example, motivate the lecture and cooperate with teachers to catch the student's attention, memory and motivation so the psychologist can understand if there is something which could be improved in the content presentation, for example. Or uh, create some synergies with the teachers in order to detach them from prejudice and beliefs about, uh, let's say, uh, under brackets, uh, difficult students or classes. Uh, this belief, of course, affects the quality of lecture. Identify learning disabilities or other key factors which can impact on the performance of the student and unlock emotional factors that can reduce uh, study success. What is a motivating lecture? A motivating lecture is something that gives a value to what the, the, the students are doing. We cannot uh, base our school system by telling you have to study because you have to study. You have to study and you, then you have to give them some motivation why a person, in this case a student, have to put some effort to do something uh, in a di direction of learning things. So uh, much of the school education is based on principles that are not optimized for promoting learning and memorization processes. The content that the children are used to see now are much more engaging than the past are much easy to under brackets, to digest, to learn, to interiorize. Okay, so th this means that uh, maybe it's not changed really the capacity of attention of students. Uh, students can give lots of attention, uh, hours and hours in front of the screen, in front of the telephone, in front of video games, uh, by following, I don't know, sports or hobbies. They have great capacity to keep the attention. The problem is that uh, differently from the past, now the format has changed. The format is designed in order to request less effort to be understood than interiorized. But it, this is not bad, but uh, should raise a, some questions about our capacity to be uh, as much engaging as other content uh, the students uh, normally see. This is the reason why we have to integrate also teachings with other stimuli, other format, the use of technology, the use of serious games, serious educational video games, whatever format that can catch attention of students. So the decay of intelligence is for many people a myth. And even if true, because it's, in, it's uh, not easy to measure the intelligence globally uh, and, and to see the differences because it depends on what you apply. So actually it's something difficult to be measured, but the decay of intelligence is a myth, and even if true, uh, that should not give to you as a teacher or a, or a psychologist a motivation to abandon the, the attempt to, to reinforce motivation. It has to be an additional motivation for you to find a way to increase the student's capacity to be motivated. And uh, also, there are many, many other things uh, to be considered uh, also after the, the, the COVID crisis. We can see the advantages of digital communication. We can see the digital advantage of uh, distance learning or, or also smart working if we think to other fields. But we have to say something which is true. The completion rate of courses in prisons is higher than courses online. The course online miss something. I'm not telling what's best, but there are two different things to act. And we know that uh, you can use the, the skills as a teacher in prisons to motivate better students. 
Um, what is changed is the evolution of the way in which we produce content. Previously, the content acquisition was very slow. I remember also for my, my bachelor thesis, still the use of search engines uh, for uh, scientific research was present, of course, but was something quite uh, new. I still use the library to get some scientific uh, research. Of course, my, my, my study was also on some historical uh, uh, aspects of psychology. So actually I, I found something very ancient. At the same time, I remember I used the books and I remember for finding uh, something I had to see hand by hand, page by page, finding the, the books, asking to the library to, to reach the source. What I do now is much faster. In one hour I can have lots of research, I can be very detailed, I can see filter for the most uh, recent research, it's much faster. We cannot say this is not an advantage. So sim simply we have a different way to process uh, aspects. And if we continue with the strategy in which a student have to read, repeat, learn, memorize and repeat to student to professors in order to understand if they will be rewarded or punished by a number, this is not enough good. What we have to do, we have to explain why the students should study that concept. What, what's the, the reason? What's, uh, what's the advantage, the benefit? Explain why it matters in the long run. So to move the attention of students in a perspective way, in the projective way, projected to the future. A motivating lecture explains the benefits to study a contact. And this have to be very clear. When I say very, it's very, very clear. As a teacher, ask yourself why students should know the subject and list more than one reason. I tell list more than one reason because what something can seem a reason to you cannot be for the students. You don't have one student, you have 20, you have 30. All students are different, include additional motivation. Five, six, seven, eight, and repeat it during the lecture. Focus students and catch attention different ways. So children and students sometimes see homeworks like a mem mer memory exercise, something that uh, is simply a mind task. This is absolutely not motivating. But one thing we can do is to teach them some strategies to memorize better, like the memo technique, which are strategies to reinforce the capacity of memorization and repeating things, which can uh, avoid them the effort of memorizing with the repetition strategies, which is something that uh, do not work very well. One is the phonetic conversion, uh, is something uh, which is very good if you have to Memorize long numbers. Uh, imagine our brief term memory uh, is based on memorizing seven numbers. But if you check it, it's not easy to keep in the memory seven numbers, especially on the long run. run. Well, what, what you can do is to use this phonetic conversion. As you can see here, you have uh, the 10 numbers. And uh, some words, especially some sounds. If you have to memorize a, a set of numbers, let's say uh, 3784590, uh, it will be very difficult to repeat it. But if you convert in letters and you try to form some words which you can imagine very well, if you remind the image, you remind the word, and if you train enough to uh, compare these numbers with the sounds, uh, you will recover the number. So you will have it because it's quite easier to re remind one image, which words you, you remind very well, than seven numbers. Another is the techniques of loci, is, which is a Latin uh, word for telling places. And uh, also in this case, you use your imagination to, include, uh, to increase your memorization. And this, of course, uh, avoiding the big effort to repeat and uh, memorize and repeat again, uh, it can motivate the students. For example, in te techniques of place, you have to identify a place uh, who, who, that you know very well. For example, a, a house, an itinerary, a palace, you know, you have to know this place. For example, can be your home, 
a friend's home, a well-known library, a street in the city, a park, whatever. You can use more than one, of course, because you, you memorize many things. So the three steps of the techniques is to draw the itinerary in this place, to associate data to details of this place and follow the itinerary imaging it, uh, from the last point, so from the final part to the beginning. So you draw it in area, so you enter in the house, you go down, you see the hall, you see the window, you walk in the front, there is a sofa, a table. Okay, so you visualize everything in a little detail. Of course, you have to know this place. Then you associate the data. Every little detail must be associated with the data and information. It's not important if it's strange, uh, even better if it's a strange detail so you can memorize better. Uh, for example, if you are studying a dispute and you need to remember uh, a, a, a law or a code or a number, you can relate the laws to a specific object. You can situate in the, in the space of your imagination. Then you follow the same itinerary from the last part from the beginning. This helps you to see the same set of details in two ways and you helps to memorize better. So the power of imagination is very strong because the logic technique, the techniques of, lay, uh, of, of places, requires an effort in terms of visualization, will, imagination, and the ability to establish associations. In this simple looking exercise, the brain develops a set of neural processes with which memory is developed. Bridges, highways, and streets are created where the information runs fast, agile, and effectively. Try these techniques yourself so you can teach also the better to students. Another strategy I suggest to you is the mind maps. Again, mind maps are an excellent techniques to help kids to memorize. Uh, we remember easily something you can imagine better. So you can teach kids to use their imagination. You will surely have realized that there is some information that your mind remembers on the fly and others that you are forced to repeat a million times and you don't remember. If you take a second to reflect, I'm quite sure that in every memory in your mind is made up of at least have a couple of these four elements. You can look at your memories in terms of images, in terms of association of images, association of sounds, and your emotional involvement. I don't know if I'm right, try yourself with your memories, but your mind communicates mostly through images, associations in Im images, sounds, and emotional involvement. The more something is emotionally uh, involving, engaging, the more you will re uh, remember very well. So this is the reason why in the mind maps, you can draw some uh, images called visuals. You can add to mind maps. And I'm sure that your mind will acquire more information without having the effort to interpreting the images in written words. It's easier to give a look to, to the map, to remind things. So there are motivators we have to consider uh, for a specific lecture. You can personalize because you as a teacher or you as a psychologist helping teachers um, know that specific style of uh, the specific style uh, of the native language or, or the specific, uh, the, the specific uh, teaching you are giving. Now I'm doing some general examples and these general examples have to be considered as general. You can redo this, uh, pr this activity for every single lecture you do. And I suggest you to pre-plan because it may seem something that takes you time as a, te as a teacher or psychologist, but you will recover the time by having more motivated students. For example, you can teach the native language here in Italy. We teach Italian as a basic language and you can give the classical exercise. But why a person have to learn Italian or English or your language very well? You can explain that is important because it's important. Or you can explain all these psychological eff effects of speaking and talking and writing well. A person who speaks well is more credible and effective. Achieve more results is more influent. Managers, people with a uh, role of responsibility, supervisors, people that have to create groups and motivate them, volunteers, uh, people working in association, whoever want to change our context 
and increase the results can use language. So we can move the attention, for example, from the grammar, which is the basics, to the effect of words on human behaviors. The effects of words as an influential strategy, because it's something that will certainly help people. So if you move the attention from the grammar to the performative use of language, then you will have more motivated students because the students will understand that Italian is not only repeating things and uh, writing well. Italian is something that leads to action. Mathematics, also mathematics is uh, for many people very boring or very difficult. Uh, there is also, as I told they a form of mathematical anxiety and uh, it's Curious to know that, for example, there is not a words anxiety or a other sectors anxiety. The mathematical anxiety is something that social psychologists studied and uh, identified. And uh, this is a big problem because mathematics is everywhere. It's so important to, to know mathematics, to have a, a, some skills of mathematics and understanding data in whatever field. It's, it's really important. Also, it's one of that lecture that kind of, of, of subjects that uh, you have to follow from the beginning to the end of part. If you don't know the basics, you cannot understand the complex part. So if a student have a lack of motivation, it will be certainly a problem later. But we know that uh, there are priorities in Europe to increase mathematics competences, all STEM competences. So why people have to understand numbers? You can move numbers really everywhere. Also toward the interests of the kids, for example, in the information technology, uh, in the creation of video games, uh, in uh, the interest of, of, of marketing aspects of fashion, of cosmetics, uh, uh, whatever. You can move the attention from numbers to the understanding of numbers. Or also you can talk about this information that can be uh, adopted by some uh, sources that present data in a, in a way which is certainly misleading. Mathematics is everywhere, as well as chemistry. You can explain the chemistry, the hard part of chemistry, how the structure uh, of, of, of different substances is, is created and the hard aspects of the science. But you can also study, explain the implication of in, in human behavior and decisions connected to chemistry, things of whatever aspect, for example, of nutrition, which is recently an increasing interest of students. Or, for example, cosmetics, the implication of the presence of some chemical substances in cosmetics that students maybe started to use, but they know the implication. So you can move and you can make fun or catch the, the interest of students by including it in your lecture you will get the attention because they practice these things. Again, history can be very interesting. If you move, for example, you know, you, you may have a way to explain history by repeating concepts and by telling what happened and a list of, of things. But history can be also history of behaviors, can be history of, of how happened things or what, are, what were the cultural habits of people at that time. You can move history and you can reconnect with the uh, actual news of the current situation. Also here you can find things that motivate students. Law in economics as well is a basic, uh, um, basic competence uh, and uh, probably under-evaluated. Uh, a, a recent statistics even found that Italy is in the 25th place in 26 countries analyzed in the level of educational, uh, uh, financial education, which is a problem, of course. So now it's, it's your turn. I made you some examples with big areas of the concept. What I suggest you do if you are a teacher or if you are a psychologist helping a teacher in getting the motivation of, under brackets, uh, difficult classes. And make a list of benefits of your subject and every lecture you, you do. Why? and define very well why students have to listen to you and what is so important and how you can use the, the interest of students in order to motivate them. There are then other very important factors, uh, for example, students and teachers relationship, 
which is very important uh, because all teachers play an important role with the students uh, simply because they pass also some many many hours together and so if the teacher is able to build a positive relationship with the students the students will perform better we socialize better for with other students have more engaging and curious attitudes toward the schools and so also better results so relationship is very important and uh, we all form some kind of evaluation of others so important that the teachers avoid uh, some uh, negative evaluation as a first thinking even if that specific student is underperforming certainly is important because we have to pass our cultural background to students it's also correct to underline that the teachers cannot uh, immerse ourselves too much in the role of the friend of pupils because by putting ourselves at the same level we lose that little part of authority uh, not authority let's say the role of teachers uh, have to be taken seriously on the other hand uh, a good teacher cannot forget to cultivate the human side of teaching he must be able to build healthy and positive relationship with pupils so to know the personality of students it's very important in a class of 25 students or 30 students there are shy children extroverted children some gifted some uh, hyperactive uh, some peop some students that may have difficult family situation you cannot know there are children who learn quickly others who need to have things repeated several times there are also those who are afraid of bad grades and those who suffer from uh, performance anxiety all teachers are different you are one <laughs> there's nothing to say you are one you have to be able and flexible enough to understand the different needs of students you start from the needs you go then to the motivation this is why teaching cannot be single and standardized but have to be as much as possible adapted to the needs of uh, each child so you have to cultivate the positive relationship between students and teachers positive interpersonal uh, relationship between students and teachers have a positive effect of student motivation and then on the academic performance on the contrary low quality relationship have a negative impact of the motivation of students so you have to increase your capacity of empathy patience openness to dialogue and also good balance of uh, the time you give to this activity and flexibility understanding the differences of students of course what you have not to do never is to show preferences even if you may uh, understand you have some preferences to humiliate the people in front of others to give some definition some labeling of the student which is the the worst thing because especially the negative labels will impact on the performance and also will you as a teacher you have a model role you cannot give these negative labels and uh, or ignore the student's signs of distress you have to try to catch the the point uh, and uh, and uh, use it uh, turn things in positive or show anger or frustration uh, this is not the place for showing your anger or frustration for, with the student you have to understand the student first even if there can be the difficult uh, frustrating uh, uh, frustrating uh, situation so successful teachers are enthusiastic friendly interested in students not as numbers but as people as active player in the growth part of students we must remember that the student teachers interaction is a two-way interaction it must be cultivated not only for the point of view of the teacher but also of the point of view of the student so there are some tips i can give you in in this way you can implement and improve the relationship with students try to spend time individually with each student as much as possible convey to students their interest in their academic and personal success create a positive and sharing atmosphere in the classroom do not give up quickly on creating positive relationship with difficult students and avoid being irritable in front of students there's something uh, more we can see about the teacher pupil relationship in online uh, lesson we have to say that covid times even if this project for, was written in the full covid times uh, of course no, now the situation is luckily better 
but we also know that uh, there is a digitalization process and so it's, uh, it's ongoing and um, we have to consider also all cases in which we use the online tools with the advantages and the possible limits. It's essential to know that there is a good dialogue between the two parties in the online teaching. Also, if you give private lecture online, it's the same. The teacher can concentrate on one student to know him better, can help to overcome the limits and make the most of the potential. Let's see now the theories of motivation in learning. One is the behavioral reinforcement. The reinforcement is the main mechanism for establishing and maintaining behavior, reinforcing positive behavior and stimulating it. For example, the student pays attention during the lecture and completes the tasks with care. There are goal setting theories based on two types of goals, the learning goals, creating supportive relationship and collective learning arrangements that encourage students to adopt learning purposes and the performance goals, avoiding kinds of pressure that place students toward goals that lead to avoiding work. The goal must be clearly specified. And also there is the self-determination theory uh, which is based on three needs, the autonomy, so feeling able to choose what to work on based on the, on the basis of the interest, the competence, increasing control over reality and therefore feeling able to interact with the environment and express one's abilities, and relationship, choosing to work with others with whom to feel good and to feel integrated, to feel part of a group of a community. In the classroom, the climate, depends not only on the relationship with the teacher's classmates, but also on the effectiveness of the teacher's organization. For this, the learning environment that supports the satisfaction of these three needs have to be promoted. Focus on interests, agree on goals where the students feel autonomous and do teamwork. Another theory uh, used in the motivation is to refer to the excellent experience of doing something challenging, having maximum mastery, pleasure, sense of control and accomplishment. This is called also the, the, the state of flow. So in this case, be enthusiastic about teaching by acting as a model that pushes the intrinsic rewards of learning. Solicit and help students maintain challenging but reasonable goals. Give confidence, self-esteem and positive thinking. There are also the theory of motivational system, which is based on three elements, so the, uh, which are three main things you have to focus on if you want to increase the motivation of students. One are the personal goals, what the student wants, the secondary emotion, what emotions are filled by the student, and the forecast of success. Can I reach the goal? Do I have the skills to do it? The motivation is therefore future oriented. The teacher must explain the objective of the activities as clearly as possible and which skills are required to be developed. The goal have to be associated with positive emotions for students, so it's necessary to evaluate which determining objective emotions activated in students. So unlock emotional factors that can reduce study success. What to do? It's important that students reflect on their values, on how they guide their sense of belonging, cultural, social, religious values. It's important that students feel respected for their culture. It's essential that the teachers gives critical and constructive feedback on the teachers transmits and sense of confidence in the pupils' abilities, even when the latter will encounter some difficulties. The teacher could try, therefore implement an approach centered on the student's vision of himself and the feedbacks he receives. Thank you.